Right, our next stop on our journey through looking at the cost price of inventories um, is to have a look at a paragraph that discusses joints and byproducts. Um, again, keep this simple, really don't overcomplicate it. Um, it's, it's meant to make your life easier and let's try and really hard to keep it that way. So um, let's go and have a look at that paragraph unpack it a little bit, look at a little example, but I really don't think it will take us very long. Right, so the paragraph we're looking at in particular is paragraph 14. It's only one paragraph dedicated to joints and byproducts. So again, let's keep it simple. What is a joint product? What is a byproduct? Well, uh, example is probably the best way to explain it to you. If you think of a butchery, and the butchery has some mince, which we'll consider our raw material. It puts that mince into a machine, and the machine produces hamburger patties and sausages for us. So the raw material goes in, and two main products of my butchery comes out the other side. Those would be joint products. Okay, the two major products coming out of the manufacturing process, they are joint products. A byproduct is something that's sort of an afterthought, it's not a material product to our business. So carrying on our butchery example, it could be the case of there's some leftover mints after making the sausages and the hamburger patties. And we package that and sell it off as pet treats. So I'm in no way in the business of making pet food. It's just making a little bit of side money on the leftover raw materials I couldn't use in my main product. And that's the distinction that IFRS gives you between the two. Joint products are major products, your main business purpose. A byproduct's really immaterial afterthought. And you'll see just now the accounting for a byproduct is also very much do it quickly because it's immaterial. So let's start with our accounting for joint products. Use our butchery example and let's say we put mince into a production process. So we'll, the mince would be our raw material. Arguments sake, to say this costs 5,000 Rand. Then we have some staff working on the machines. Um, that would be our direct labor, the salaries and wages we pay to them. Arguments sake, say 4,000. And then we have some overheads coming into this production process of 1,000 Rand, perhaps the electricity and things like that, just keeping it very simple. We're not going to go into the detail there. But our total manufacturing cost is 10,000 Rand today, for example, just to keep it simple. So this morning in my butchery, I put the mints in, that was 5,000 Rand. I paid my employees for operating the machines 4,000 Rand for the day. I incurred 1,000 Rand's overheads. At the end of the day, the stuff comes out of the machines. And what comes out of the machines? Well, we've got the hamburger patties and we've got the sausages. Those are the two things coming out of the machines. So now what IFRS tells you to do in paragraph 14, they say you're going to incur costs in the production process and you just need to split those costs when the result of that production process is a joint product, two or more products. And all IFRS tells you is just find some logical way to do that. So IFRS really doesn't make this complicated for you. IFRS is very simple. Take that 10,000 in our example and find a logical way to split it. So... Sometimes in the tests, students battle with the splitting of it. So I want you to pay special attention in your examples and questions and old papers when you're working and preparing. Look at how they split it. And it's always coming down to a ratio. But please don't let that ratio suddenly make you think, ooh, IS2 is difficult. I have chatted to students in the past and then they feel IS2 is difficult with joint products. But then through the discussion, we realized, you know what, it was just the maths in terms of splitting it. So get that maths under control when you're looking at joints and byproducts. And this is then really a breeze. So let's say, for example, um, we're going to sell our hamburger patties at 10 Rand a patty. And we're going to sell our sausages at... 10 Rand as well, just to keep it easy. So one hamburger we'll sell for 10 Rand, one sausage we sell for 10 Rand. You're already doing the sums in your head automatically now because I've kept the ratio simple for you. What is the ratio between the selling prices there? It's 50-50. 
So if I'm working in a percent, which is always the best way to go when you're working with this ratio, try and get whatever the ratio it is, try and get that out of 100. So now what we would say is, okay, then what is my cost for the hamburger? Well, very simply, it's going to be 5,000 Rand. And the cost for the sausages that are produced today is also going to be 5,000 Rand. So I have taken the 10,000 manufacturing cost for the day and I have just found a way to split it. And as soon as I typed in the 10 and 10, your mathematics wasn't a problem. You instinctively realized it's 50-50. So let's just change it a little bit to make it slightly less obvious. Let's say, for example, that um, the sausages we can sell for 5 Rand a sausage and the hamburgers we can sell for 15 Rand a sausage. So I need to work out a ratio again of what's going on here. And doing your plain simple maths again, you do this and I think in grade 4 at school already where you start working with fractions and ratios. In this case we're looking at 25% and 75%. Okay. Because what is 15 out of 20 and what is 5 out of 20, just to recap the maths there. But always get it to a ratio. And IFRS is not prescriptive on this ratio, not at all. They just say find a logical way to do it. So in this case, in this instance, I've used selling price. It is the most common. There might be other logical ways of doing it. But as long as you can motivate to your audit committee, the ratio you've done it, or your internal auditors, or to your CEO, etc. Just find a logical way to do it, and then split those costs. So in this last example, my 10,000 manufacturing cost today for my main products is 7,500 Rand, and 2,500 Rand for the sausages. Take a moment to reflect on this if you need to, and then we'll move along and do the byproducts. Right, so carrying on now into looking at the byproduct, and this is really simple, guys. This is very, very easy, and really keep it simple. I'm going to narrow the scenario down to say we're still a butcher. We're putting mints into the production process that cost us 5,000, the direct labor is 4,000, the overheads are 1,000. So that's what's going to happen in my butchery today. So I'm going to incur costs of 10,000 Rand today in my butchery. But now, instead of joint products, I'm going to produce hamburger patties from this mince. And then the leftover mince I'm going to package and sell as pet mince. So, the byproduct would be the pet mince. That's not my main business. It's a byproduct. So, now what IFRS says, you know what? Joint products, they're important. So, take a bit of time, do ratio accounting, and split the costs in a logical way. When it comes to a byproduct, a byproduct by its definition is immaterial. So the ISB says to you, you know what? Don't waste your time doing fancy calculations for that byproduct. So what they then encourage you to do is just simply go and use the net realizable value. So if I look at the paragraph here at the bottom, paragraph 14, most products by their nature are material. When this is the case, they are often measured at net realizable value. And the value is deducted from the cost of the main product. So, we'll say then at the end of today, pet mints. Um, I've made enough pet mints to perhaps make 100 Rand from selling it. That's our net realizable value. And what have they said? Measure the pet mints, which is the byproduct, at its net realizable value. Don't have to get cute about it. Measure it at its net realizable value. So the net realizable value of the pet mints, in other words, our cost for the pet mints is 100. And then allocate all the other costs to your main product, in this case, your hamburger patties. And it's as simple as that.